Hey guys, this is Bill Calhoun. We're here. This is the WB. I always have to think about it in my head. The World Bodybuilding Physique Federation. And this is their weigh-in. So this is going to be like a behind the scenes. You're going to love this. Come on, let's check it out. So listen, if you guys have questions or something like that as we get along, go ahead and type them in on the bottom there so that um, I can have these guys. Adjust. This is my first time here. I don't know what's going to go on. So we're just going to, we're just going to roll with it, okay? Let's give it a shot. Gym, so so everyone's in line. So this is the room. This is where, and you can see everyone standing on the side. So this is kind of like really strange. I've never been to one. This is so cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find Pradip. I'm going to find Pradip. I'm just going. I can't talk too loud. I feel like I'm in a library. If you, if you want to talk to any of them, this, this Bill, Bill is a very famous fitness icon as well. He does a lot of uh, interviews with athletes and all that, which will be broadcasted in his Facebook podcast. My, my Facebook page, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then he goes with people from the US and all around the world, we're watching you guys as well. So if he comes out to you, he wants to talk to you, just give him two, three minutes of your time and help him out with whatever he has to ask you guys on your interview. Right? Very, very casual, very casual. And this is Pradeep, Pradeep, to say hello to the people. Hello. This is Pradeep, he's the president of the Singapore WBF. World Body. Yeah. Yep. There you go. And so that's what, you have to scroll up a bit because I'm much, much shorter than he is. Oh, hello. Okay, so come down to me. <laughs> there you go. So we're, we're just going to hang out. It's going to be very, very natural. So Pradeep, you go ahead and do your thing and sure. just go around here. Enjoy yourself. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, man. Okay. Okay, guys, so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be hanging out here with everyone and it looks like people are kind of nervous because they're getting ready to do the weigh-in. Are, are you guys nervous? No, nervous. Not nervous? No. What's up? Can we, can we, can we just shout out to you? Yeah, he's a bit. 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 Okay, what's your name? Yazid. Yazid. Nice Bill, nice to meet you. Man. Where are you from, Yazid? I'm a local, local one here. Okay. Yeah. Dude, you're tall too. Huh? Look, at, look at where my legs go compared to yours. It's <laughs> embarrassing, man. <laughs> just don't stand up and make me feel bad, okay? So... Is there anyone else? Is there What's anyone? going on here so that people will know? What are you guys doing um, at this event? This is the way in, right? This is the way in. Yeah, for me, I'm everything in a sportsman. So, yeah, the way in is for the So, for, the, for, one, for, the, for them who are competing in bodybuilding, for us, it's just high category. So, it's a 175 for mine. It's 175 and so. So, what's the difference between the physique? Because you said this is for the way in is for the bodybuilding. Yeah. And yet you're doing the physique, so all that matters is that you're doing the height. Yes. So they're going to measure to make sure that you didn't shrink over the past week or something like that. Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, so that we, they can divide those uh, athlete for height categories. So for today, for physique. So they do it for heights, yeah. not weights. Not weights. For so bodybuilding, yes. Ah, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. The so difference between physique and bodybuilding, uh, physique, we don't have uh, any. But, um, but, uh, so, yeah, we just wear board shorts, yeah, and just we must have a nice symmetry, muscularity, and our bodybuilding is different. So, so, so why did you do, why did you decide to do um, physique instead of bodybuilding? What, what made you decide, because I'm sure you're probably thinking, okay, do I want to do this, do I want to do that? What's the difference for you? Uh, <laughs> I like physique more because uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just have doing uh, competition in physique. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I'm not going to change division. So in the physique, I'm, I'm sure you guys must do something more than just walk up and down the stage, right? So w what is it exactly? Oh, you have to show your personality on the stage, right? You have to be all tight and dry. A lot of things, a lot of things in my yeah. 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 Well, great. And so, are you, so tomorrow, you guys, 
What time do you go on compared to the time that the bodybuilders go on? Oh, the time. Are you picking up the vocals? Oh, four thirty. Four thirty. Four thirty. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Yes. And we'll so probably come back. And is this is this your buddy? Is he competing as well? Yeah, he's in the bodybuilding Okay. Oh, he is. Well, let me step over here. Can I share your rice, man? <laughs> So we have. So I'm gonna talk to you guys in a moment, okay? Do you mind? Okay. Okay. All right. So now we have two different guys here, right? So you're into bodybuilding, and he's into physique. Yeah, correct. So for you, why now? Because you're getting ready to weigh in. Aren't you no, supposed to stop eating? No, no, I already weigh in. Oh, you already weigh in? Yeah, yeah. So uh, now the perfect moment to like come up, to come up so that I'm more fuller and more ready. So how did you weigh in? What was your uh, your KG? Uh, 64. 64. Mm -hmm. And where did you want to be? Was that where you wanted yeah, to be? Yeah, that's where I want to be because I'm competing under 65. So 63, 64 is fine, but I'm 64, so it's good. Okay. So from now, mm -hmm. what do you do? I mean, now that you've, you've made the weigh in, you're eating now. Yes, correct. So typically, how much weight do you regain again? Let's say you're 64 now. Mm -hmm. What do you think you'll be tomorrow? Um, depending on how much I can eat and I don't overspill myself, mm -hmm. so uh, provided with no water. Okay. Explain to these guys what overspilling means. Just go ahead. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's like um, you have to come up just nice, just to see your body is filled up uh, totally. You're looking tight, looking full, and overspilling basically try your best when you're on stage, not to uh, have some water retention. Uh, means you're really overspilling the macros that you're supposed to eat. And so, what happens? Appearance-wise, when you okay. overspill, when you overspill, you won't look as sharp. You won't look uh, as razor blade sharp. You won't look uh, definition. Your definition will fade. Your your body is not as great. So technically, it's like jeopardizing your whole brand. So you have to be very careful on the choices you make or what you're eating and the timing. And how do you know that? How do you figure this out? It sounds really complicated. Oh, it's either when you have um, someone experienced guide at you or you've competed several times and then you actually experiment your own body and see how it works and so far so good. Yeah. So for me, I know what works for me. So yeah. Excellent. And how many times have you been doing this? This is my sixth competition. Yeah. Okay. yeah so I'm going for my third win. So, uh, you're going for your third win. Yeah, I can put the third win. Third win. Yes. Okay, not placing. He's going for the third win. <laughs> okay, so yes, I'm going for tight series. So yes. everyone else who's watching this, who's competing, and your name again was? Oh, my name is Haida. 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 Tell him. Haida. Yeah, my name is Haida. H-O-I-D-E-R. Okay? okay. So Make you guys, sure scream for me. Three, exactly. Three times champion. Okay? Which and yeah. a donut. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nobody else. Just Haida. Okay. Yeah, just Haida. Okay. When you walk out of here, these guys are going to... Take you and mug you, man. You know that. I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. May the right. best man win. May the right. best man win. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Good right. job. Hi there. Right. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Man. Okay. Let's go on over here. Let's talk to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. How are you? Are you competing? I have to get a lady in. I have to get a lady. Otherwise, are there any ladies who are actually doing the weigh-ins today? <laughs> That's great. Okay, no, 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 no. That's okay. Come on, come on. She's a trainer, so she's my trainer. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Can I put this one here? You know why? You know why? It's really important because most of the people who are going to be watching on this channel may not be bodybuilders. They may not be physique champions. You know why? Because we're all sitting in this room. Okay. So this is like this is going out to the world. So people really want to know from a kind of like a real level. We want to we want to make sure that they know that this is not this is people. I mean, you guys you guys are putting in a lot of effort for this stuff, right? You, you worry about your nutrition. You worry about your training. You worry about your mindset. And so and you worry about your partners. Okay. Who are got to put up with your? What was it? No, I temper. <laughs> temper. Explain to me. Tell, tell me. How is he like when he's, when he's actually when he's actually going through this? Come on, come on. Impatient, I guess. Impatient. What do you mean by that? Go ahead and talk. What do you mean by that? Wait. I mean, I don't know. What do you mean by that? Just tell. Impatient. Seriously. Okay. But, but why is that? Why do you think he becomes impatient? Is it? He's obviously. I'm Heidi. He looks like a, a really cool guy, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, he is. He is. He is. Dang! Hey, show that, show that to the people. Look at that Hello. shot! You guys, you Hello. gotta come and look at this, man. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. okay, so, but let me ask you, when he's going through this, 
how do you feel about it? Are you involved? You're, you're a trainer. Right? Oh, okay. Short trainer. Actually, yeah. Uh, you have to get it and she's my trainer. Oh, that's so cool. You guys are trainers. M. Size. M. Thank you. So if you're training him, no, when you train him, are you, are you, are you, are you working on his nutrition or are you working on his exercise? Mine is his exercise. His exercise. Nutrition. So you're working on his exercise? Yeah. Okay. If you want to come around here, that way you can catch both of us in. Is that okay? Can you get us both in? Okay. So when you work on his, when you work on his exercise, what's the difference between someone who normally goes to, sorry about that, what's the difference between someone who normally goes to, like, a gym and does fitness versus what he's doing for bodybuilding when you're training him, right? When it comes to the what part? Muscle groups. Muscle okay. What does that, so what does that mean? What's the difference between that? No, 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 no. He knows more. No, but you're training him, right? No, I'm just, just helping him. Just okay. helping him. Yeah. So just make sure that I hit every muscle group yeah. and I lose leg off. If I'm How does she do that? So is she actually what? When you're when you're when you're lifting, does she actually look out for it and tell you? Or yeah, she pushes me. Make sure I hit the rep. I hit the muscle. I I don't stop. I don't rest that long. I I hit everything before I leave the gym. And if I don't, I'm, she was going. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's good though because that means that he's empowered you to do that. Yeah. Now you're not involved. Why not? You're not involved in physique or bodybuilding. Uh, no, why, no, no. why not? Why yes, not? Yes, I'm just really good as well. Yeah, since I'm a personal trainer, I'm so I'm very technical. So your personal trainer, what what type of clientele do you normally have as a personal trainer? Is it different different kinds of guys? Everything. Is it for competition, fat loss, rehabilitation? Toning up the body as well. And what's the biggest what's the biggest challenge that you have with your client as a personal trainer? The one thing that kind of like pisses you off more than anything else, because I just talked about this yesterday in my program, so I want to know from you, what are the biggest challenges to your client? For them to commit, like, to return to the way, because they have their own responsibility as well. So, they'll be very busy. So when I ask them to come, they'll be like, it's me, like, last minute. So it's quite tough for me. So, yeah, it takes two hands to do that. So, and what do you like most about what you're doing the person? Results. Results. So when you're talking about results, how long are you going to be with someone in order to get the results that you need? Is it like three months? Depends on their Depends on Yeah. Okay. So the longest one will be maybe around one year. If they like me, they will stay. Okay, yeah. so, so it's up to them as well, right? Yes. Okay, so let's just say, for example, someone's trying, generally speaking, someone out there is trying to lose weight, okay? And then they hire a personal trainer. What are some, what are some, like, three things that they should look out for in hiring a personal trainer for weight loss? Posture. Posture? Yeah. Okay. Uh, exercise that you do, like, human training. Okay. And weight training as well. Because a lot of females are scared to hold a dumbbell and weight kind of machine. Because they're scared they might walk up. Yeah. Why isn't that true? Why why don't women necessarily bulk up when they start using weights, free weights, or dumbbells? It's very hard to bulk up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this so this is a myth then. So people aren't gonna all of a sudden just like that when yeah. they start lifting weights. Yeah. Okay, great. And your name is Rima. Rima. Yeah. Tell everybody in California and locally, hello, Rima. Hi, I'm Rima from Singapore. Okay, what do you want to tell people in California? <laughs> just anything, anything about tomorrow's competition. I just want to say good luck to my boyfriend. There you go. Alright. There you go, folks. That's Freeman. That's Heido. Okay? Let's take a look around here. Sir, are you competing? No. No? You're not competing? Okay. But you guys, that's what's interesting. You guys are not competing. Why are you guys here? Because you're supporting your friends. You're supporting your friends. So, and you, what? Are you supporting him? Are you supporting them? And that's the deal? Did he drag you down here? No. So, that's fantastic. That's wonderful. So he has his whole group together here. And that's what this is about because when you're training, obviously, you need the support of people just like how.
how to have his girlfriend who's um, make sure that he's accountable for all the stuff that he does. And then you have a group of individuals. So it's all about support. This is not an ego-driven type of a sport. This is um, a, this is teamwork. Even though you're on stage on your own, but you need all this support for individuals. So it's really kind of cool. Okay. And your name is? My name is Jensen. Jensen. Nice to meet you, Jensen. Okay. And your name? Ruby. Nice to meet you, Ruby. What do you do, Ruby? Nothing. <laughs> Ruby does nothing. Okay, she's totally void. She just sits here. She actually sits here from year to year, and her boyfriend comes, and she'll still be in this spot. Did you get your name in there? So like a call Prince of Hollywood. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just messing with you. Okay, you should never say nothing to me. Okay. <laughs> okay? And, and what do you do, sir? Um, I'm serving my national service now. Okay. Yeah. Explain to people who may not know what national service is back home in California, where I'm from. What does national service mean? Here? <laughs> no, just just briefly. It's the military, right? Yeah. Every guy's been for two years. There's something for two years and three. I'm a fireman and mission practitioner. Excellent. Excellent. So, folks, that's what it is. Sort of like in, in, in the United States, what we have is we have reservists, and we also have the draft. We don't have the draft anymore. But that's what it is. The national service over here, and you, the age that you go in the national service is? Uh, the youngest will be 16. 16. Yeah. And the required number of years is how many years? Uh, two years. Two years. And that's mandatory for every Singaporean, right? Yeah, so see, folks, that's what's really interesting, because Singapore is different than, than other places around the world, especially California, because they actually are mandated to go in to the national service or the military, the branch, one branch of the military for two years. And so that's, uh, it, it's, it's just very interesting, okay? So just to let you know, we're not talking about the United States, we're talking about Singapore, that's where we are, and those are the differences. So let's go around the room here and let's find some more people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sir, can I talk to you? Uh, the big guy, the big guy, okay? <laughs> You can't miss you, man. You got this white shirt and everything's going on. It's just, it's just the shirt that's big. Oh, it's just a shirt that's big. 3D, 3D. 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 Can I buy one of these someplace? Okay. Because I, I need one of these 3D shirts, man. What's your name, man? Read one. Read one. Yeah. Read one. Tell everyone over there what you do. Read one. Uh, what do I do? Huh? What do you do? Don't, don't say what Reva said. Reva says she does nothing. I know you don't do nothing. Okay. <laughs> what do you do, Reva? As a uh, career. You mean? Anything, man. Just, hey. Whatever you want to tell people. Uh, okay, uh, this is my passion, what I do now. Okay, what's your passion? Right, uh, my passion is all about body, bodybuilding. Right? Uh, I think I've been in this line for for 15 years. For 18 years in okay. bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. been, uh, what, do you, what do you do, everyone, in, in the bodybuilding world? You said you've been into it for 18, 18 years? 18 years. So what's been the main passion that you've been doing? Have, are you competing? Are you training? I'm, I'm competing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And uh, you know, to help out in uh, in uh, bodybuilding uh, competition, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we try to uh, bring our local people up. Yeah. Bring back the uh, bodybuilding back to the scenes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, once upon a time, I think it went it went flat. Why did it go flat? What what happened? You talking about the local scene? You talking about the world scene? About the local scene. What happened? I think uh, there wasn't uh, any any support. You know? There wasn't any uh, there wasn't any uh, local bodies which want to uh, to hold any competition. Uh, as as you can see, this is our uh, this is the first WBPF. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so here I am trying to support our local scenes again. Uh, so uh, by sending my voice to uh, to support uh, Pradeep, mm -hmm. uh, to show them that our support. So let me ask you something. There's, there, the, the reason why it did was because you weren't getting in support. Was it the, su the support that you weren't getting from what, like sponsors or just local audiences? What was it? I think, I think uh, almost everything. I think uh, from sponsors, from uh, audience, and, uh, and then uh, nobody, no organization wants to hold any uh, competition at all. Yeah. I think, uh, so <clears throat> right now there's a there's a very there's a lot of uh, organization right now as we speak. There's uh, FML, there's NABA, there's uh, WBPF. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'm I'm actually from uh, NABA. NABA. Yeah. What does NABA stand for? Uh, National Amateur Bodybuilding Association. Okay. All right. right? So uh, I'm uh, so I've been competing with NABA, and my NABA, uh, so my race, so <clears throat> NABA is. A, I think Naba is also just recently just opened in Singapore, about a couple of years.
Jesus. So I'll be cool with that. So let me ask you something, okay? Because for the average person out there, there's this confusion with bodybuilding for competition and bodybuilding on a general sense because some people will say, oh, you're a bodybuilder and oh, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. What would you like to tell people on a, on a situation in, 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 in Singapore? about what bodybuilding is like for just people in general. Why it is that it's, it's your passion, right? So just, just tell us, what, what do you want us to know about bodybuilding as a sport, as a passion? Not all of the organizations, all that kind of stuff. What do you want to let us know from a very personal level? That it, it, whether or not it's something that, you know, you guys, I'm, I'm pissed off that you guys believe that we're like this because we're not like this. This is what it's all about. What would you like to say? What would you like the world to know? Seriously. All right. As we speak, I know I think it's a trend. Right? So what I'm trying to say is that bodybuilding is not a trend. Right? Bodybuilding has been in, in the world for years before I, that, I think, uh, before I was even born. Okay? So, so what I'm trying to say is that this is not about trend, right? This is about hard work, bodybuilding. Eh? So uh, to call yourself a bodybuilder is not by taking pictures and posting to uh, Instagram or Facebook, you know? So uh, that's not what we're all about, right? So uh, we, are, we are serious in bodybuilding. So bodybuilding means you're putting some uh, serious effort in the gym, right? Your time, your effort, right? We sweat and uh, bring it to the stage, right? That's what, uh, that's what we do. That's what bodybuilders do. You know, you, uh, you, don't, you don't go around and self-proclaim that you are a bodybuilder, you know, just, just by posting pictures and uh, your training in IG, you know. Yeah. Okay, so when you say that you guys put in the work, give us an idea of how much work you put in in the week. Tell us about the, the control that you must have over your nutrition. Tell us about the science that this is all about, because a lot of our science, a lot of our science has been based on the professional bodybuilder's world. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're doing nowadays... It is literally scientifically based. Tell us about what kind of regime you guys do in terms of that hard work. Yeah. I, uh, I think, I think, as I speak for all of these people in the room, yeah. I think uh, to to compete, to bring yourself in this level, I think, I think, I think uh, they they got to train six days a week, maybe twice a day, right? With that kind of regime, the food, okay, you got to be, uh, you must have. You must, you must eat on time. You must have the right amount of carbs, right? The right amount of protein, right? Every two hours, every two and a half hours, you must have carbs, you must have protein. So all of these have been completed, right? The volume of your body size and all, right? The, the, uh, the amount of rest that you need per day, uh, the amount of sleep that you need, right? Supplements, aminos, zinc, magnesium, everything. Yeah, so this, this nutrition, right? Your training, uh, your time management, okay, and then, of course, on top of that, if you have family, you need your family to support. So this is like a full-time pursuit. This is, yes. this is not like something that you do on the weekend. No, this is a professional aspect of you. This is this this is a lifestyle. You know, we live to do this. This is what we call ourselves a bodybuilder. You know, so <clears throat> every time when we walk to the stage, we want to bring ourselves. Better, right? Not to not to uh, defeat anyone, but is to defeat ourselves. You know, each time we want to bring ourselves to a better level. You know, so it's a challenge for ourselves. Last time we are like this, so right now we got to be better for ourselves. Excellent. Folks, that's what's so really cool with Ruman said. Wants to defeat yourself. This is a battle making yourself better. And I think that's what it's all about. It's not, as he mentioned, it's not about trying to win over on the next person, whether or not that be male or female. It's about doing better for yourself. And I think that's where we get this confused. When we're looking at it in the general world, because you're seeing individuals doing the best that they are, we have a tendency to think that they're doing this selfishly. No, they're doing this because they're trying to do something you're trying to make a mark on the world for yourself, right? Of course, yeah. Let's, I, I, the, hey, I've never heard anyone say it so articulately. Dude, that is just so hard. Okay, I'm just kidding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Andrew. And I want everyone to know this, okay? Let everyone know your name again and tell them, uh, so, tell people something over in California. Hi, uh, my name is Ridwan. And uh, I think uh, it's about time for us to bring bodybuilding to another, to another level. Great. Are you going to be competing tomorrow with me? No, my boy. Yeah. Okay, can we talk to your boy? Sure, for sure. Okay, great. Come on, let's go and talk to him.
First of all, Zaki, you said you're 40 plus, right? 40 years old. 40 years old. Okay, folks, first of all, there is no excuse because I hear this all the time in my industry. Right? 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 People are saying, no, I'm too old and I know what I think. Nobody is too old. Exactly. No one. Look, dude, okay? And he looks this young probably because look at, look at that smile, man, because it's so positive, okay? So, people, if you've got a problem with yourselves, just replay this Facebook Live and think about Zaki. Okay, Zaki, so. You said that you were um, spotted for manhunt. Yeah. Okay. Now, folks, for those of you who don't know, uh, in California it runs a bit different. Um, manhunt Singapore. Yeah. Right? So when were you spotted for manhunt Singapore? Uh, I, I joined my competition last year in April. Uh, before April, I joined another competition also in February, okay. also under physics. And uh, in between my competition in April, I was spotted, and I was prepping for the April competition. So uh, I told the manhunt organizer that I won't be going on diet. What I'm trying to show is when you are doing a sports physics competition and when you are doing a modeling competition, you don't have to be too lean. You don't have to be too rip. You don't have to be too strict in your diet. There is always things called uh, it, if it fits your micros. If it fits your micros. See, you, you, you can cheat meals once in a while. But okay, no, but tell us because we don't want people to get the misconception because some people, because I know that like back in the back in the eighties, right, a cheat meal was like eggs, milk, and these types of things. Nowadays, cheat meals are different. So depends, it depends. Because for me, uh, for me, I don't cheat on drinks usually. You see, because I don't want to waste my calories just on coke. Uh, it's better that you waste your calories on pure food, solid food, where all your energy, the fats, are uh, used as uh, fuel for your workout on the day. You might look, you do not make sure, because during my prep for this time around, I do have really cheat meals. I don't make it a cheat day, but I make it a cheat meal. So I choose what I want. Usually it's just like one a large pizza on my own. Mm -hmm. You may look big today, but you don't be sure that the next day, your tummy will shrink. And I will show you more. But this all depends when you have your cheat meal that you have something planned after yes. that, right? workouts and stuff. Yes. Explain to us about usually, that. Usually, uh, after a cheat meal, or after a cheat meal the next day, or on the day itself, so I do a heavy compound movement like my legs, usually, where it uses the most of your energy. So, the, so your, your, your fats or this kind of thing, it's, it's actually making it to use. Some people, usually when they have a cheat meal, they chill on your biceps, on the it's just a small muscle. Usually, they don't, they, they don't really use that energy that much. And also, cheat meals is when you are on a total deplete. Mm -hmm. Now, explain to people what a total deplete is. What does that uh, mean? A total deplete is like uh, you are in low in carbs, low in, low in uh, protein or something. And you look small, you don't look full. And you know there's certain nutrients inside of you that is less than you. So, you don't want to lose that size. Uh, but you still want to maintain a small waistline. So it's okay to feed in all the nutrients back inside your body so that as your muscles are still growing. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's a spike in your insulin. It's a spike in your insulin telling your muscle, telling your muscle, hey, I'm eating something nutritious. Everything is taken in. And so what Zaki is saying, like what Ridwan was saying, there's a, there's a lot of scientific terms here, but this is, this is the nature of it. These guys live by this vocabulary. If you don't know what they're talking, about. If you don't know what insulin is, Google this shit, okay? Just look the stuff up, okay? We don't, we, don't need to, we don't need to dumb all this stuff down. This is their world, folks. That's how complicated it is.
is that's how much you need to know in terms of science, okay? So Zach, you're talking about depletion, right? So being deplete and then you're getting a spike. What type of training do you normally do for physique that might be different for bodybuilding training? Uh, I, I don't know about other people, but for me, I prefer to do more on concentration training where, you know, uh, you need to have a 3D kind of effect to your muscles. Because there's no point carrying heavy, but you know that you can't carry that weight. So instead of just having a full concentration, you're just pressing it up. And your muscle is just growing bigger, but there's no cuts, there's no nothing. So what's the point of doing that? I might be bigger than this guy, but this guy might be stronger than me. But my body condition is better than the guy that's carrying heavy. That's why power lifters are just one big lump. <laughs> Okay. That's right. what I'm telling myself. I'm not a power lifter. Okay. I'm an athlete. Not a big lump. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a big lump. Those big lumps are quite strong. Right? Yeah, they're quite so strong. That's the difference, right? Yeah. Because some people will think that power lifters um, are fat. Yeah, 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 but that's yeah, not yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And some people will think that physique individuals um, don't have strength. But that's not true. That's true. true. Okay. But when I'm when I'm on a walk, I tend to carry heavier than what I end up okay. because I need my muscle to shop, to grow. Because I'm eating a lot more, so I need all the nutrients to be taken inside my body. I, uh, but like what you have been teaching me all this while, you are an athlete. Live the lifestyle. If you if you don't want to live the lifestyle, then better don't make it. Because what I know is by living the lifestyle, when I start, I'm starting comp prepping, I'm not suffering that much. I mean, and, this is, and this is what a lot of people do, right? Yeah. A lot of people put themselves through suffering, uh, and they think that's the way to yeah, go. Yeah. But as a lifestyle, you can't continue yeah. to suffer for the rest of your life. It, right? it, doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean when you're living the lifestyle, you're not allowed to have a cheat meal or uh, like high cream or something. For me, what I do is I have five meals a day, okay? If let's say uh, I want to have two, I want to have two cheat meals, like uh, maybe a pizza or an ice cream, I make sure the other three meals are clean. Mm. Or if I want to have three cheat meals in a day, I make sure the other two foods are clean. Okay, so, so, so what you're doing is most of the time you're eating healthy. Right? Yes. But this, here again folks, don't, you know, this is because some people, some people out there, they're going to go, oh yeah, that means I can have a cheat meal because Zaki said so, so I'm going to go, no, 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 no. I'm having a cheat meal, but... The way I'm working out. Exactly. Okay. It's different. You guys, you guys have. I work hard, I eat hard. Are you listening? Are you watching? Understand? I work hard, I eat. <laughs> exactly. Because, because people always tell me that, hey, uh, you, you have a cheat meal, but why are you like still, you know, your muscles are still rounder, you know, you, I can still see this, the shape of your thing. I always tell that person, you are seeing me eat. But do you see me train? <laughs> exactly. I have this perception in mind. I always keep this in mind. You eat hard, you train hard. You eat shit, you train like shit. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Okay, now that, I'm going to highlight that. You train hard. You, you eat hard, you train hard. You eat shit, you train like shit. Okay, people, okay. H H. SS. <laughs> Hard, healthy tip. I love it. Right? Okay, so now in terms of physique, what's going to happen um, between, so you're going to be measuring the height. Right? Yeah, I just need this measure. Okay, so, you so, but why is height important in a physique? Because uh, in physique competition, it depends on whether there's too many competitors or there's too little competitors. If let's say there's too little competitors, the height doesn't matter. Everybody is in one case and it's got open. But if it's, like, it's too many competitors, so they start to separate uh, medium high, tall high, and short class, where all the shorter people will compete among the shorter people, all the medium high people will compete among the medium high people, all the tall people will compete among the tall people. That is why they measure any height. So why do they do that? Just for just for planning and arrangement? Yeah, just for planning and arrangement actually. Because for physique, it's not for weight, it's more for aesthetic. Right? You look like a it's animal. We don't look freaks. We, we still look something that is achievable. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. So folks, this is what's interesting. So when you come tomorrow, when you come to watch this, okay, great. Okay. Zaki's going to go away, but I'll come back. Go ahead, man. Um, something, something to understand here. When you come and watch the competition tomorrow, there are two different things that are going on. There are bodybuilders and there are physique um, competitors. So the difference between, from, from, from what I'm hearing, the difference between physique competitors is that it's more about the symmetry and about how it balances to a body, even though that is also the same way in bodybuilding, but it's just different. So there's going to be something for everybody.
everyone. So I would suggest you guys come on down because this is actually really unique. And, and what, I'm, what I'm hoping to do is to just take the wool off of the fact that you're separated from people who are putting in hard work, putting in the mindset, just like you, just like anyone else. There's no separation. These, these individuals are not different than us. These individuals are us. But they put in the hard work, just like anybody else. Okay? So let's just, um, we're going to before we decide to come back, we're just going to go over and just, just take a look at what they're doing over here, okay? So that you want to look at it. Okay, so I think what they're doing right now is they're actually classifying individuals in terms of height, height for the physique class, and so that's what we're checking out. They're actually correlating things, okay? So that's what's happening over here. So we'll just have you take a look at it for just a moment here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to another section of individuals and let's just check out. <laughs> This is Sadi, okay? Um, Sadi, are you involved in bodybuilding or the physique part of the world? Contributing. Right, bodybuilding. Okay. And are you from Singapore as well? Yeah. Okay. So, tell me, which weight classification are you going to be in? You've, you've just done your weigh in, correct? Okay. So, what, which weight classification are you going to be in? 85 and above. 85 and above. So, which classification has the most competitors? Is it the, the middle weights, the heavier weights, or the lighter weights? For Singapore, for example. So would you be considered a middleweight? Is that what you're? You're the heavyweight? Oh, okay, so uh, now, for, now that you've finished your weight, what do you do? How do you prepare for tomorrow? Do you eat? Do you not eat? Do you stay under the same nutrition? How, how does it normally go for you from now until tomorrow? What, what has been working for me for the previous edition is that normally I will have put more water in. More sodium in. You flush out all the water. Excess of water. And then I will abruptly cut it off. At the point where I see my body still giving out all the water. Cut it off. Then I will add in carbohydrates. We got from payment of a little bit of protein. Every hour we will have it. So this is going to happen from today until tomorrow for you? Yep. So do they have um, pre-judging, or does this actually act as the pre-judging with the way in? No, the, the 
be done in the same time. So that means that's all happening tomorrow. Yep. So you still have to watch yes. your nutrition from now. Yes. Yes. Okay? And so when does the pre judging take place tomorrow? Is it, before, uh, is it in the morning, in the afternoon, or the evening, or is it all happening in the morning? So you guys, so I, like, for example, I know that they have uh, a lot of popular movies, and what you mentioned, where they have this small gap and then individuals eat. I mean, is that a myth? I mean, what, what's up with that? Okay. It's not a big maybe it depends on different people how the body react to mm -hmm. certain so way they do. Some of us are probably yeah. so two days prior. I would have been in my body two days prior. But when I am holding a bit of water, remove the heart, put in the protein bag, that will become like more ajurvatic effect. Mm -hmm. So normally after weighing, I'm carried off and then I will not be feeling thirsty. But but <coughs> different people have a different way of doing it. So the window of dressing normally by a scientific approach, mm -hmm. whatever you're eating now, you can eat for tomorrow. So whatever you're eating now, the couple of edges, yes. like what is it? Actually for tomorrow. The window that between the first step of the day is just what to be Mask, sugar, and stuff. The body only react like a time after that. We need to be on stage. By then, if you're not on stage yet, you must spill over. Okay. Guys, and this is what's really interesting, what Sari is mentioning. You see how scientific, how, how finite it is in order to figure out the, the window of opportunity to get in your carbohydrates, the window of opportunity um, to prevent from that spillover that we were, we were listening to earlier. That's how complicated it is. So it's important, and you know, you know me, I'm going I'm to cut through the bullshit. When you guys are out doing your Instagram photos, you're doing your YouTubes, and you're doing all that kind of rubbish, you're doing that for maybe like a snap of a button. But this is a lifestyle, it requires a lot, and so therefore it requires your attention. When you come out and you watch this program tomorrow on Sunday, it's important to understand the people behind this, they're breaking this stuff down to a science. It's the, it's, and actually it's the greatest science in the world because it's about bodies. And it's not so, oh yeah, just get up there and pose, oh yeah, just go ahead and lift weights. You see how complicated it is? Okay, now, in terms of lifestyle. How does it affect? Do you have family? Yeah, that's my wife. Oh, okay. Hello, wife. <laughs> how does how does training this type of a lifestyle affect whether or not it's in a good way, whether or not it's in a challenging way, your family life? What does it do for you? Well, it, first off, we must. I mean, we must have a good support system, right? And send the people around you, you love us, and we'll be there to support. During the off season, yes, it can be a bit more flexible. Spend time. During the pre contest mood, probably about six weeks out, that's where you need to put your time to yourself. It's a selfish thing. But as long as the support system is good and they are supporting you all the way, you can try to balance it out. Where probably all day, you go out with your wife, three as cardio, active recovery. You go out, go for walks, watch movies, and stuff like that. So, kind of like uh, trade off. So after the competition, you have to pay back. Right. You have to pay back. Do you have children? Uh, uh, I have two. I have two children. So can you just tell us how does being involved in a lifestyle sport, how does it affect your children? In other words, what do you want your children to learn from what you've gone through in terms of support, in terms of motivation, in terms of hard work and all that? What would be the message that you want your children and anyone else out there who has children who are struggling with things because they're just not getting it? What would you like? How, how, how do you want your children to see you? Uh, I'm actually a grandfather of two. You look like you're like in college story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. So I used to work in a school previously. Mm -hmm. So what I been I was fat previously. You were fat? Yeah, because of a lower back injury. Uh, I put this removed, so I kind of lost it. So I bring it back and I start working in a school. I was a discipline master. Discipline master. What is a discipline master? <laughs> basically, if you do something wrong, I'll be moving down your neck. So basically, what Sai is saying is, a discipline master. If you do something wrong, you just disappear, you just disappear off the face of the planet. They just, yeah, you're just gone. Okay. okay so the the thing is that about you know, you're more than this. Yeah. So if 
kind of like make you lazy and then a different way of doing things. So, but I, she blessed me a lot that I need to get back in shape. So when I do that, the changes go by month by month. The students that see it motivate, get motivated. So when I'm done with that school and born right, I see most of my ex students are now lifting weights. And mind you, those are the students who are having problems. And they now channel it in a very positive way. And time to time again I see them in the gym, they do acknowledge me. They do ask for training programs, nutrition tips, yeah, and really help them out. But what I want to see because I have two grandchildren, so that they did see for them. I mean they used to it, but the other kids are not get used to it because they say, wow, this guy is different. But when they grow up, you look at it as if they can do it this way. So that you will build up the brain, where the mind, not only by the books, you will create something more uh, an art piece way, be more creative. Mm. Not just learning from a book, but you try to explain what you can do with your body. But I see a lot right now, the obesity rate for the kids in Singapore is overwhelming. So, so it kind of like uh, motivate, motivate them to be healthy. Not to be like me, but to be healthy. So uh, I do bring my kids, my grandchildren, and my kids. that's another set of cardio. Yes. Yes. cardio. Yes. So is it right to say that it's not just about the body, but it's about the mind yes, in correct. terms of children. Yes. So what would be the one point that you would want to say your journey has done mentally for you, where everyone would pick up? For example, if I were to say, um, uh, previously if I was dancing, the thing about dancing for me was the fact that I, loved, I learned about music and I learned about how I got in touch with my creative mind. What would you say for you psychologically has been your greatest gift in doing this? Going through all of the slip discs and all that kind of stuff, what is the one thing that you, you know, you cherish? Your mind is stronger. The mind is stronger. The mind is stronger. Even if you're sporting five plays inside and I know I have a slip disc, two slip discs, I can do it for reps. It's not overnight, but gradually you build it up. Your, your body will say no, but your mind is always strong. They tell you that, oh, you can do it, you can do it. There are many days when just after the brutal leg workout, just sit down and think of it. But there are a few of my friends here, the younger ones who train with me, they will train with me with my second leg workout, not the first one. <laughs> so you can last or well, keep up with me. <laughs> so okay. I will keep telling you, I'm older than you guys, you should try to keep up with me. So that's the thing, more of the mind. And that's very interesting because you said that the mind is more powerful than the body. So that, that says a lot about people who give up before in anything, not, not only physical activity, but even things like if it's, if, it's, if it's homework for children, if it's business, if it's relationships, you can actually get past this, right? Yeah. There's, there's also things like peer pressure for the kids. So let's say, for me, so for my peer pressure, it's basically who said you're not supposed to eat when you're like, right? So you walk past by some of them, say, oh, uh, I tell myself, I've eaten that. Anyone else who has a collector that he came to So kids, something like peer pressure for them is that, oh, why not? Don't go and train. Don't do, do your own work. Let's go to the mall and play around. So if you done that before, you need to do something that's very important as studies and exams. You can tell them, no, you want to do stick in life. So that's the thing about you. That's all about you. Look here. Tell my people back in California. First of all, give your full name and just do a shout out. Tell them whatever you want to do. Take the last word, man. Go ahead. All right. Uh, full name. Go ahead. My name is Sari Said. I'm from Singapore. I'm 41. And each is not a, a, a matter of fact. But you can still do whatever you want to do, be it in your life or doing a transformation. Excellent, excellent. Sorry, thank you very much, buddy. That meant a lot, folks. This is sorry. Watch him tomorrow. Come down here, support these these people, and change your lives. All right, thank you. Take care. 
Well, folks, we're just gonna we're gonna keep moving around. There, most of them are finished with their their weigh-ins. We've talked a lot to some individuals. So um, right now, uh, I'm <laughs> I need to take a pee break. Okay, <laughs> okay so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. You, you're not gonna follow me. Okay, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and I'm gonna have my camera assistant just move around. If you have any questions. If you have any questions about um, what's going on tomorrow, Sunday, for the competition, if you want to know about tickets, if you want to know, if you have a question that you want to ask everyone here, then go ahead and punch it into the comment section below, um, and please share this, okay? Those people in the United States, I know it's coming on like, well, it's like way past midnight right now for you, but people in Singapore, okay, it's Saturday. If you have questions, you want to know about something, um, Sunday will be tomorrow, and the competition is going to be tomorrow, so come on down and, and join and support this whole event, okay? So I'm going to have um, my 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 fabulous person here move about. She's going to take some pictures as I go down and relieve myself. I'll be back. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens. But, but I, think, I, think, I think you know very well it is 
uh, it's a sport where, where all uh, members of the Federation or National Sports Association, uh, they, are, uh, they, they, they be told by the Singapore Sports Council that they should comply with it, the rules and regulations. And it has been going on for many, many years now, many, many years ago. And as far as Singapore bodybuilding is related to this, we are not a member of the Singapore Olympic Council. So what's the difference between not being what is the difference between being a member of the Olympic Council okay. and not being as a bodybuilding association? The Singapore bodybuilding was the national federation. We had we did not comply so that things to the Singapore Sports and the Olympic Council has deregistered us from the from the from the, from the, from the body from the sport national federation. Mm. Because uh, the Singapore Sports Council, uh, the Singapore Body Bullet Federation did not comply with certain rules of the so, This is the reason why it's not working. So, if the, so, so, the drug is not one of them, mm -hmm. it is possible that we had some problem with the management side when we hand over to somebody else. So, they, they took off the sports to be out from the, from the National Federation. But we are we a are registered body of the, of the Singapore Sports Association, Singapore Association with registered society. With the, what's the name? Register of Society. Register of Society, okay. okay. They, they organize us as a sports. Now, in order to get into the Olympic Council, uh, a member of the Singapore Sports Council, you must comply with all the rules and conditions of what the Singapore Sports Council has to do. In other words, you should at least have six, five affiliates or affiliated with you. We have more than five or six affiliated. A lot of bodybuilding federations. Just are opening up, they are yeah. not under the sports, they are under the Accra. They are running on their own organization, they can run, they can run like, 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 a, like a business. So why is that good or bad if they it start is. opening up on their well, own I, You see, they don't comply to what the rules of the set up. No. We are members, the, our sports, we are members of the world board. We have an IF, the International Federation. We have the World Board and the like WBBF right. is member of the Singapore you know, uh, International Board of Body Organization. They have got more than 100 of our affiliates. We have sports and members of WBBF, members of ABBF. So in other words, when when you guys are a part of the World Organization, right. you're falling under an umbrella of certain um, regulation issue, whereby if you're running it for a business and you're running it for a profit, right. something may be questionable. Yes. In a you see, we, we are at nature. We are at nature. Mm -hmm. we are at nature. So explain that to me. What's professional bodybuilding versus amateur bodybuilding? What, what's the difference between them? Of course, you see, now we have in America, in other countries in Europe, we have professional bodybuilders. Uh, they have, uh, they, they run it like, 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 like business. Uh, so what are you doing? But, uh, and they are not compliant to the strict orders of the I see. But so let me just make a clarification, folks. And that's probably a question that's been going through a lot of your minds in terms of the uh, regulations in terms of doping versus amateur versus professional. So. We, we know that tomorrow's competition, because you're here, is going to be under the guidance of regulations, correct? Okay, so po folks, that's another reason to, to understand that what you're going to be seeing tomorrow, I mean, it takes doubly hard work to get the bodies, to get the minds, and to get the social network that individuals will have by competing tomorrow. This is not some quick fix, magic drug, magic pill type of a situation. We don't believe in it. It's good at how these athletes using the so-called substances at the end. So it is also one part that we want to educate the athlete to say that uh, we don't support the some allow anybody to into these uh, problems to get into involved in uh, to this concept and so forth. And, you know, it, it's going to give them uh, a body called uh, health problem. Any other sports are doing, but I'm not trying to say about it. But as far as Singapore body is concerned, and also anti-doping and medical committee to into the area and we go through all those courses to ensure that all of at least comply with that and uh, from time to time we conduct uh, what they call testing before going up to the competition on the actual competition it may be a committee a selection committee to, uh, to, to pick up them before they go at least for testing at the end, and also those winners, uh, 
interesting and any they are found they can, they can be suspended. The association people will get fined and that will be that could uh, go through uh, you know a suspension of period of certain, certain years depending on the committee. Folks, that's what it's about. Lachmane is here to make sure that these regulations, to make sure there's an even keel over everyone who's competing. That means that the criteria for winning or placing or just competing, the criteria is hard work, it is smart work, it is a passion about all these. Lachmane, tell your name to my California folks out there, your full name, and just leave the last little bit of whatever it is that you want to say. President of the Singapore Body Builders Federation. So I, for many years, I've been involved in the sports for almost 20 years ago. And uh, of course, over the years, I thought we had over to the younger generation to take over. We have got a lot of competent young uh, officials here who can take over and uh, run the championship. And that's funny, what would you like to tell those young people right now who are getting ready to take over? What's the one thing you want them to know above and beyond everything else? You're kind of like at the tap. What right. You you see, uh, what actually I really would like to advise the athlete is that uh, train hard. You, that's always another. Uh, in order to grow your body, there's so many good food that you can take. Uh, and you can even just some supplements on sales in Singapore and even over, over the seas, uh, which is not uh, what they call uh, uh, drugs, whatever it is. And of course, the other one is also try to you know, not uh, get yourself involved in, 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 in doping because it's going to harm them in that matter. And uh, it's also not good for the country, to be safe, and also the sports. So uh, our duty is to ensure that as far as possible, educate the athlete, to make sure that they don't go to this. They, they, can look, they can train hard, and there's no shortcut in training. They can train very, very hard in order to go to the, to get themselves you know, a better athlete and uh, you know, improve themselves. Great. And that's funny, your full name again? Go ahead and oh, my name is Lechman and Maria Pelé. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, let's, let's, let's shift around here. Uh, yeah. We're Thank you so much. When is this coming up? To... It's already on Facebook. No, no, no. no. Yes. <laughs> it's live. We're no. back. This is live. Uh, which, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, okay, so what you do is you go into Bill Calhoun, and, and it's it's running on my Facebook Live right now, right. and you go in there, and there'll be a replay as well. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank You're you on so live, man, so okay. it's If you needed to do your hair, it's too late already. Okay. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you somewhere before. I've seen you. I've seen you. Richard is the owner of the uh, gold gym. Gold gym. Gold gym. Seriously? Yes. You want the best? You want the best? Yeah. Use the. Okay, Richard. I'm Bill. Okay. Now to Richard. Okay. Well, this is the thing. Richard, gold gym. I mean, that was like. That's like the bomb, right? I mean, that's where he is. Back. Yeah. That's where everything started. <laughs> But but is the case, sir? Right. But you but you but you're saying that you you used to be. So what did you do? You gave up uh, gold gym? Yeah, I gave up because the rent went up too high. But so when you when you first started, what motivated you to start it? Did you come from like Venice Beach and go? You know, I gotta have one of those no. in Singapore. Well, well, what was that? Was my passion. I I used to be a uh, take a bodybuilding when I was two boys. Really? Yeah. I was very skinny and then I. Uh, what made me take a body? Because I, I saw a book, a right? magazine uh, with a baseball by Sam. And they're probably black and white yeah, pictures, right? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It motivated me to take a body with okay. anything. And I was playing scenes, I was in school. And so, but, but how did you come from the bodybuilding to opening up a gym? First of all, were there any gyms back there where you were training? Because I know in Singapore, many, first of all, there were no box gyms, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, I can't even remember any gym except for so, so how did you train? On that time, there's one other gym. I was in Nubra's gym. He was earlier than me. So, so is that where you went to train? No, no, no. So how did you train back then? Back then, I was yeah. trained in a, in a shed. I started in a shed. Makeshift? Those makeshift yeah. shed, rusty weights and all that. Yeah? No, no gym. Yeah? Yeah. And, what were the, and so what made you decide to open up your own gym? But you got gold gym. I mean, that's that's yeah. like the pinnacle of all gyms, yeah. especially back then. How did you do that? Did you did you have to speak with the owners of gold? Gym? Well, that one is, that one is, no, that one, my brother. My brother went to speak to uh, the two two ladies on the farm. And so back then, how was it different than what people 
people are doing now with the box gyms. I mean, all the box gyms that you see around versus gold gym. What are your thoughts on that? My team is a hot call one. Hot call gym. Everybody wants to build up their body. Now it's different. Now they only want physique. They want to be healthy. Last night, bodybuilding is hot call one. So what, 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 what would be the message that you would tell them? In other words, you'd say, okay, look, it was hardcore back then. It's, you guys are just doing this right now. If we wanted to get back to doing what you guys did in hardcore terms, what would we have to do? How would we have to change the way that we're training today? Mm, that one, I, I, really, I really don't know how to, how to go about it. How did you train? Were you training every day? Were you worried about, were you concerned with your nutrition and these types of things as those well? Those days, we don't have all these things. Those days, we train. We don't really? have all these things. We only eat natural food. Okay, now, explain that. Okay, now this is this is this this is key. Because nowadays we have the supplements, everyone is trying all these things. You said that you had natural foods back then, okay? Are you guys listening to this? Whole foods and natural foods? Now you're gonna hear it from a person that was there, okay? So what did you mean by natural foods? Big things like chicken, fish, eggs. That's called natural food. No more these protein powders and all that. <laughs> Sponsors are gonna hate this. <laughs> okay. okay, and so like, so give, give us an example of what you ate on a daily basis. Let's say, for example, uh, yeah, yeah, those are the normal food we eat. Uh, but were you concerned about carbohydrates, proteins, and fats at that time as well? We we don't have all these knowledge. But we just train and eat all those nice food. Just eating the natural food, and I remember—I know that in Singapore back then they didn't have a lot of the McDonald's franchise. No, no, no. they didn't have the fried chicken, right? Right. So you, you had no choice but to eat natural. So, so tell me, did you prepare your own foods, or did you actually go to the food stalls, the hawker stalls, in order to get these? Food, food, food. Mm -hmm. The parents put the food. So, what was the difference between people who were eating on the outside and the foods that you were eating, nutrition-wise? Weren't they eating the same whole foods? Well, what was different for you guys? Different at the time. It's a lot simpler, right, than it is today. If you guys didn't hear that, 70 plus. Here again, don't tell me about these nonsense excuses for not being healthy, right? What do, what do you want to tell people who say this, who, com who complain about being <laughs> Whatever their their complaint. Tell, tell the people about it. What would you like to tell them? No, just just keep fit. Like, just exercise. Do a lot of exercise. Just keep fit. Yeah. How important is the mind? How important is the mind in keeping fit as well? Is it important? If you, if you feel young, you always be young. Right? If you feel old, you'll be old. That's a good point. If you feel young, you're gonna be young. If you feel old, you're gonna feel. So ultimately, yes. I always feel young. Yeah. There you go. All right, man. Hey, it's good to talk to you. I'm not talking. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. It's not about that. This is this is just natural and raw. Okay, that's what we do, right? Good. How are you, sir? Very good. Good. Let's talk. Let's talk to you. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Tell us what your name. How you doing? My name is Matthew. Matthew. Singapore. Yeah. Matthew. And so, how are you involved in this? Uh, I'm involved uh, during my days, younger days, and all this. Uh, physics and uh, not bodybuilding and all about uh, until today I'm doing masters. Masters? Yeah. Wow. So uh, my last experience was last year in Pattaya was in masters. Mm -hmm. Out of the 16th reach I came in at number 10. So congratulations. Yeah, that's uh, not an easy task because it's my first experience. Right. Uh, oh, that was your first last year? Uh, first last year. So oh, okay, wait, 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 Matthew. Whoa, whoa, back up, <laughs> back up, back up. Okay, so that was your first competition? Uh, first competition for Masters. For the, I was in, in my travel days, mm -hmm. so I've been down all the years. Mm -hmm. So I dropped out for a while and then because of my family and things like that. So I came back and uh, that was way back, <laughs> five years back. So why did you come back? What, what because, motivated you to come uh, back? makes me back because I believe my own will and my uh, own guts, which I wanted to do, I want to come up with something, I want to look forward to get a goal. So I, my fire was burning. Mm. My fire was burning all the way, so I make sure I want to do something, which I want for my age, my respect, I'm now 58. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to the next year, this year is coming in Mongolia. So I'm going for the Masters also. Do they have Masters tomorrow? Will you be competing uh, tomorrow? No, or? I'm, I'm part of the officials. Okay. So I'm not participating. But actually I have my pedal click to go up. 
Uh, his mother just passed away yesterday. So he's supposed to be with me. We are both uh, as the main person in Singapore. We are doing the masters in all the years. And uh, so, sorry for the setback with him because I didn't expect that he's supposed to do tomorrow for the uh, guest cruising. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't make it. Probably we're looking forward to when he come. Mm -hmm. And the uh, thing is, uh, he's not there. So we just leave it at the rest of the team going to be there for the masters. So we'll call it. Yeah. So Matthew, what is it that bodybuilding brings to you. Obviously, it's not just about the, the physical pursuit. Yeah. There's something that brought you back. You were away for five years, yeah. and then you came back in it. What is it that, that moves you inside to want to do this? Uh, it's all stopped because of my workload and all this. So the day goes by, I was telling my body is not taking so much, so I think it's best for me to move faster, get it burning faster. So it's not looking at the age. I want to do... Uh, regularly, so I put it myself every Monday to Friday, five days a week, so I put it, push it myself up working and start doing my training, it's after work, so I have been doing for all the years, for five years now, so never stop me. Wow, so give me an idea of what, okay, so you're working um, someplace else during the daytime and then you come back and train, that's right, okay, so what do you, what, give me, give us an idea of what you do after you come back from your terrestrial job, what type of workouts, how are you, um, your sleep, your nutrition. Uh, yeah, my nutrition, my every morning protein as usual, and then my my supplements, my food, is everything I do, my own food, I'll bring back to work, because I don't I always take clean food. Mm -hmm. So it make me more healthy, more fresh. So okay, tell us what clean food, we heard it now. <laughs> you heard regular whole food okay. and clean food. Okay. Well, folks, I hope you're getting, because what I, what I like to do is I like to tell everyone, because people are always asking, okay, well look, I'm eating okay, I only eat um, one scoop of ice cream, I only eat one pizza, I don't eat a lot, so how come I'm having a problem? So explain to people what clean food is. Clean food is especially your home cook, your plate, your I let's say I have the chicken breast, my broccoli, uh, and uh, my rice, and my uh, fruits. So it's all, uh, in every two hours I start to meal it myself. Every two hours that's my set meal. Mm -hmm. So this is how I work myself. I keep it in the bag, so I know how, when I get back to work, I can heat up. When I come to the gym, I can still heat up and I still eat after my workout every day. So I keep me going with my clean food. So it looks healthy, and you look forward for it. You, you want to go again and again to you know, the gym, you're looking for it. That time is coming, it's 8 o'clock. Oh, it's about time for me to go again. So this is how. So with the clean food, is this your normal fare, or do you do you normally you eat like this even if you're not prepared for competition? Uh, not prepared. Yes, it's, it's all prepared. All prepared because I, I believe in my preparing. So, but what I mean is, um, do you is this only the way that you eat when you're preparing for a competition? Do you eat differently outside of competition? Differently because if I'm not participating for a competition, I won't eat the clean foods because I will just eat what I like. Yeah, that's right. important because I cannot eat rubbish and then after that I go back again I have a little bit of uh, uh, issue in my healthy and all this. So it's best for me to do some, a little bit out of that and more on my plate. Okay, so what does this do for you because you mentioned that you're going to be competing for the Masters. Yes. How does eating clean help you in terms of just the way that you feel, the way that you think, your vitality, how does that help? Uh, and your exercise. Yes, of course. Of course, I have to do my cardio in the morning. I have to wake up early because you're going to make uh, at least four hours in the morning and then you have to do my cardio. I'll usually do that and then I'll back to work. And then um, I have, wouldn't have any time all the way right up to 8 o'clock. Then I'll start to do my whole process of my bodybuilding and all this. So that's where my protein and my supplements and my food will be. Eventually, so, right, yeah. Matthew, I want to come back to you in a moment. I want to ask you a question. I want to hear what you can say okay. as far as that. So let me catch that. Thank you. No worries. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to the criteria for judging. So uh, we just have your attention. If you want, just come over here. Just move closer. Everyone get as much as possible. Anyone else outside? What you're doing is you're going to tell him about the criteria for judging right now, and this is Pandip, he's going to yeah, explain so to you. Tomorrow right? we can just brief on the girls tomorrow. Okay, but girls will be fine. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so we start with the uh, uh, men's sports physique. We'll start with the men's sports physique first. No, please, 
Okay, final confirmation for the uh, men's sports is it there are going to be 10 competitors. Okay, as we have uh, taken your suggestion, it will be split into two, two categories under 170 and above 170. Yeah. Each of you will have your individual categories selected. First, second, third, first, second, third. After that, we will try and see as soon as possible for the top six to come out, okay? And you will have your chance to pose for the overall category, okay? You are clear about your T walks, okay? Clear about your T walks from the time you come out, you will see it left, you will see it right, back to the center, and then you stand in line with the rest of the competitors. As an added benefit to you, when you are back in your line waiting for the other competitors, please don't just stand like that. Keep moving. If you don't keep moving, nobody is going to notice it. Okay? It's your point to show the best parts of your body and to be able to get the best recommendation. There will be a comparison from the judges should they request to see you pose again. When they request you to Questions on athletic physique. You know you have your quadrants, correct? You have your front double bicep, front leg spread, side chest, only no most muscular. Yeah, double back biceps, back leg spread, side triceps, abdominals. Okay, are we clear about that? Okay, anybody not clear? 11 poses, 17, Okay, 11, they will be announced and you do it accordingly. Mm. Athletic physique, you will have your comparisons as well. Should the judges call you out, you will do your 11 poses again. Okay? Or if the judges just want to see a comparison, then it will be announced just the four quarter Okay? Alright. Any questions? Okay, moving on to bodybuilding. <laughs> Most of you are all seasoned bodybuilders, so you all should know. For the seasoned bodybuilders, standard, your front double bicep, front leg spread, side chest, any side. Okay? So you choose your dominant side. Back double biceps, back leg spread, side triceps, any side, okay? Abdominals and thighs. Comparisons will be the same poses again. Okay? Now, with the choice of the bodybuilders that we've all agreed here, okay? 
after your respective categories of the under 60, 65, the men's 70, 75, and the under 85s, okay, and the men's masters, all 10 of you will then go on stage. Clear? All 10 with your same pack numbers, and then you can fight for the overall. Okay? Okay, there will be no mandatories for the final post stuff. Basically, you'll come out, okay, and then you do your 30 second post down. That he wasn't allowed, so just uh, athletic physique, what we are looking at is that seven, uh, six bodybuilding compulsory poses your front double bicep, your front leg spread, your back leg spread, abs and thighs, and uh, side chest. Only no more, uh, no uh, most muscular. Any questions so far? Yeah. Your, your one minute one minute is always first. Then after that you you go out, you retire. Correct. Then once everybody is done, then we call all of you out. Then it will be a mandatory. Okay. Your music, all of you for bodybuilding have given your music. Some of you have two different types of music because you are in two different categories. Correct? Just in case, if there's any technical difficulties tomorrow, if your own personal music doesn't come up, <coughs> Either you retire backstage when we sort that out, or if we have to have another music to play, then you have to just make do with what we can with a, with another proper music that the DJ or the sound man can play. It, it happens in every show, right? Some some things are beyond our control. So just in case if your music for some reason can't play, we will find you a suitable music to play. You're not gonna play like Mickey Mouse and you know, right? Uh, do you have any other questions? Everybody reports tomorrow at uh, one thirty. Okay, reporting wise at one thirty. Um, everybody here is clear on doing your spray tan, right? All doing spray tan, right? Okay. All right. Now the one thing that we have to control because of the space, more so because there are ladies in the back, bikinis as well, and all this sort of stuff, is you must understand if. We do not allow certain people to come up to the back of this. Okay. Every year there's the same issue. Oh, this one, my friend, this one is helping me with my muscles and my backside or whatever it is. We can't do that. The space constraint is there. Okay? The ladies' area is totally off limits to everybody. Even officials, only lady officials are allowed to go into the ladies' area. There's a separate room okay, for the for the first one hour they'll be there doing their makeup and okay? Okay. After that, they will be sharing the same room with you guys, but we try to coordinate it out for something. So there's also a live feed that while you are in your holding room, you can also watch the show. We've got the, the TV broadcasting. At any point of time, if you want to come out and watch the show, you are most welcome to watch the show. Before your, before your category is called out, after your category, if you want to come and watch the show, by all means, come and watch the show. We're not going to restrict you from that. But when you're coming out, of course, you don't have to wear a jacket or something and sit in the seat and watch. Okay, timing wise, the first category is going to go on Okay, so what we just, <clears throat> as we see what we're doing now, is they're giving the criteria, they're giving the directions and everything that um, they're supposed to do in preparation for tomorrow, for the show, even in terms of how they're disseminating the dressing rooms and whatnot. So you can see there's a lot of work that goes in to going ahead and coordinating this and to making sure that it works out well. And folks, that this is just, as you can see, all they want is clothes. It's going to be fantastic when individuals actually get into their, their element and they wind up posing on stage. So once again, this is the World Bodybuilding Physique Federation's competition that's going on tomorrow, Sunday at Carpet Center. And you just look down below. Um, later on, I'll go ahead and put in all the information for you. Come on down and support these people. We're going to see if we can talk. I know we've been going on for quite some time now. Let me see if we can go ahead and talk. We're going to finish up. I'm going to ask Matthew a question, and then we're going to see if Pandif will have time. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be it for me. So, come on. All right. So, any questions?
So, what you're talking about, sorry to cut away from this now, because I want everyone to know about the regulations. So, the accounts, you were talking about, you get up in the morning, you worry about your nutrition, you go to work, and then you come back and you work some more. Why do you do all that? That's just my responsibility because I am not always tired, but I just want to do it for, because I want my ambition, I want to go for the masters this year to compete. Why? Because Why? What, what's, it's, what's it's all my fire is going all the way down to make sure my passion, that's right, passion, I want my passion and my goal uh, to show that people that I, for my age, that I can go all out for 100% and looking at those guys down, they should do the same thing what I'm doing. So that's just my encouragement, uh, your responsibility, and uh, look forward to what I'm going to do. So, Matthew, look at the camera. Tell those people out there your one message that you'd just like to share with them. You just started mentioning it, so give them a message. What would you like to let people Okay, guys, uh, it's not because of you young or that old. It's always encouragement, and whether you want to do it or not do it, do it what you want. And make sure your goal will be there for your life and your, for your future. And let the, the kids know that you are doing the best. Your age is respectable. Thank you. Appreciate it. We couldn't. We, we had to get that last part. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Rebecca. Take care. All right, folks. I think that's what it is. Let me just say goodbye to Pandit here. And we'll Actually, let's let's come over on this side. Come on. Okay, folks, check these guys out, okay? Now, it sucks because they all have clothes on. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow, they're going to get naked. <laughs> okay? In the G-strings and thongs, they're going to go bum, bum, bum. There you go. Marie, you come here and then take a photo of them. Select, you want to come? Come, Andrew. You might. Who's up? Who's up? Yeah, who's up? I'll say one, two, three, everybody get ready for post down. <laughs>
so you can go ahead and watch the replay, but it was all about you. And I'm going to be there to support you guys tomorrow. It's going to be you, right? I'm face again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, I'll do that. Right, right. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to send them off. I'm going to send them off. I never give out cards anymore. Are you coming? Yes, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, I'll give you a message. Thank you. All right, we'll see you then. Okay, guys, that's it. We're out of here. Sorry to take so long, but these guys are fantastic. Get ready for tomorrow, man. It is going to walk, 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 walk. Okay, I'm Bill Calhoun, Bill's uh, body and brain. We'll see you later. Take care.